What is up, everybody? Back with another list here today, and it's going to be my top 20 favorite sophomore metal albums. Really tough to do here because there are hundreds of thousands of great choices. Finally got it sorted out, though, and as usual, it's just my favorites, and um, it turns out a lot of these are great classic albums from classic bands, but of course, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I like to mix in obscure shit, of course. Uh, there's some of that on here, but the majority of it is just good classic stuff, and uh, just in the order that I like it, so give me yours in the comments. But I'm going to jump straight into this here. I've got my list set up down uh, right over here because it's a lot of stuff to stay in order with. So my number 20, I'm going to start off with Pure Holocaust by Immortal. So good classic black metal right here. Came out in 1993. You got a Aboth and Demon Ass doing all the uh, instruments and vocals on the album. Um, it is a Aboth doing the drumming. He did drums on this one and Battles in the North. The um, guitars, of course, and lyrics done by Demon Ass, but... Good album here. A couple favorites on it, I'd probably say, are um, Frozen by Ice Winds and Unsilent Storms in the North Abyss. But uh, really, really good classic black metal right there. Number 19, I'm going to go with The New Order, which this is great classic thrash metal. Came out in 1988. A lot of good stuff on it. Um, my favorites have always been probably uh, Trial by Fire, Into the Pit, and Disciples of the Watch. Amazing riffing and soloing uh, going on throughout this whole album by Eric Peterson and Alex Skolnick. Just a great classic album. Uh, just setting this stuff down. But uh, my number 18, I'm going to go with Ruler of the Wasteland by a band called uh, Chastain. Good classic um, speed, power metal, traditional metal uh, metal mix. Got Leather, uh, Leather Leone on vocals, who I think is one of, if not the best female singer in all of metal. David T. Chastain, one of the all-time great underrated shredders in metal. And uh, yeah, it's really, really good album right there. Ruler of the Wasteland. Number 16, I'm going to go with Diary of a Madman, Ozzy Osbourne. Of course, this is the uh, last album with Randy Rhodes. He unfortunately died in a plane crash pretty shortly after this came out. Over the Mountain to open up the album is one of the best album openers of all time. Flying High Again is great. The title track is amazing. SATO is awesome. Just uh, really, really good stuff here. Ozzy sounds good. Of course, Randy sounds amazing. Just a great classic album. Where are we at here? Number, number 16, I'm going to go with Sad Wings of Destiny, Judas Priest, 1976. Um, Glenn and KK, of course, on guitar are amazing. Rob Halford, my favorite metal vocalist of all time. Um, what we got here? Alan Moore on the drums. Of course, Ian Hill on bass. He's been on every single album. But looking at these songs, a couple favorites I'd say are Island of Domination, Victim of Changes, and The Ripper. But uh, a lot of great stuff there. It's regarded as an all-time classic by a lot of people. Um, one of their best by a lot of people. I wouldn't rank it in my top five Judas Priest albums, but um, it's great nonetheless. Number, where are we at? Number 15, I'm going to go with Storm of the Lights Bane by Dissection. This is a great classic uh, melodic black metal band mixed with a little bit of melodic death from Sweden. Jean Notvit on guitar and vocals, the band leader. Great musicianship all around, though. A couple of my favorite tracks I wrote down for it are uh, probably Night's Blood and Unhallowed, but top to bottom, really good, solid album. My number 14, I'm going to go with Taking Over by Overkill. Another classic thrash metal album right here. came out in 1987. Uh, best songs on it, I would say, are Deny the Cross, Power Surge, Fatal of Swallowed, Bobby Blitz and Dee Dee Verney, of course. The, uh, I say this every time I talk about Overkill, but they're the two mainstays of the band. Uh, Bobby on vocals, who I think has got a good voice. Dee Dee on the uh, bass. Just uh, overall, really, really good album there. Number 13, got this one. I've got like half of them that I'm talking about here on some kind of physical format. But number 13, I'm going to go with The Last Command by Wasp. You got the band picture there. All these guys look like a beast. But um, yeah, Blackie Lawless, the band leader. Amazing voice. One of the best and most unique voices in all of metal, in my opinion. Got um, Randy Piper and Chris Holmes on guitar, who have amazing tone. Uh, there's really great riffs and solos all over this album. Wild Child, one of my favorite songs of all time to open up the album. Ball Crusher, Blind in Texas, uh, Jack Action, Widowmaker, the uh, title track. Really, I love all these songs for the most part. I love Wasp, so this absolutely has to be on my list. The Last Command, number 13. Number um, 12, I'm going to go with The Great Radio Controversy, which I've got it on CD as well, but here's the cassette tape. And this one is the album on the list that leans the most towards hard rock but i think uh, it's it's close enough to call call metal so we're we're, we're including it here we got hang tough is an amazing song lady luck heaven's trail no way out so there's a lot of really good hard rock and heavy stuff on here tesla the great radio controversy number 12. 
Number 11, I'm gonna go with Ride the Lightning. So, of course, I've uh, done my fair share of, you know, Metallica making fun of, just friendly joking around, but this is a great album. Really, all their 80s stuff's really good, but got uh, Fight Fire with Fire, Ride the Lightning, For Whom the Bell Tolls, first three songs. have always been my favorite, just almost dropped it. Great classic stuff, Ride the Lightning, number 11. So number 10, I'm gonna go with Night of the Storm Rider by Iced Earth. Um, so of course, everyone knows what's happened with their guitar player, John Schaefer. Yeah, he was being a dumbass, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop listening to their music from 30 years ago. This is still a fantastic album. There is countless classics on this, a lot of their best songs. Um, a lot of people think Angel's Holocaust, Storm Rider, Mystical End, Pure Evil, Desert Rain, Travel and Stygian, really just the riffing on this album is fantastic. I've always thought John was one of the best um, rhythm guitar players in metal, just, and this album kind of, I would classify it, say like it's Iron Maiden on steroids, is kind of the way I think of it, but good classic stuff, Night of the Storm Rider, and number 10. Number nine, I'm gonna go with Dusk and Her Embrace by um, Cradle of Filth, big Cradle of Filth fan. This is a mix of like black metal and gothic and symphonic, all that stuff. Uh, love the overall sound of it. A couple favorites on here I'd say are Heaven Torn Asunder, Funeral in Carpathia, Haunted Shores, but Great album. I did rank this the best of 1996 in that video a while back. So go check out that video if you haven't seen it. But uh, my number eight, I'm going to go with, I've got this one on vinyl on the wall back there. And it's on CD. Abigail, King Diamond, uh, the solo band of King Diamond. You got Mickey D on the drums, um, Andy LaRock, guitar. Uh, he was on, Andy LaRock played guitar on... Uh, all of the King Diamond albums so far. And King Diamond has been saying they're gonna put out their new album for over a year now, like it's supposed to come out. They put out a single over a year ago. That was good. The last album came out in 2007. So I don't know what the heck's taking so long. They need to hurry up, but uh, King Diamond, great band. You got Funeral Into Arrival. Like the funeral song is a little intro, interlude type of thing, builds up into Arrival, which is amazing. The Possession is a fantastic riff. The seventh day of July, 1777, The Family Ghost. A lot of great classic songs on here. Abigail, King Diamond, number nine. That was number eight. That was number eight. We're at number uh, seven now. So number seven, I'm going to go with Hell Awaits. And, of course, Slayer, 1985. Great, great album. Praise of Death, Kill Again, Necrophiliac are a couple of my favorites. Just uh, for the time, some of the fastest, heaviest stuff around and super evil sounding. Just great, great stuff. Number six, I'm going to go with No Place for Disgrace by Flotsam and Jetsam. Amazing, amazing band. Amazing album, uh, super underrated stuff. You know, Eric, AK, the vocalist, I think is one of the best in thrash. He has great range that uh, showcased on the song, I Live You Die. Just go listen to that on this album. His screams hit some very high notes, which is very impressive. The title track is great. Really, um, most of that stuff on the album is really, really good. Number five, I'm gonna go with Never Neverland by Annihilator, another one of my favorite thrash metal bands of all time. And I would say this is their best album. But I am a big um, believer that Annihilator has so many great albums past their first two, but this one is their best and favorite songs on it. I would probably go with Imperiled Eyes, Fun Palace, Phantasmagoria. Jeff Waters on guitar is one of the all-time greats. His shredding is uh, so just like effortless and perfect. The speed and precision he plays with is ridiculous. Uh, great riffs as well from him, but freaking awesome album, Never Never Land. Number four, I'm going to go with Don't Break the Oath. Now, this is from Merciful Fates, and of course, I've said I like the King Diamond Band a bit better, but in this case, when you put Abigail against Don't Break the Oath, got to go with uh, Don't Break the Oath. Great, great album. The Oath is one of the most evil-sounding songs of all time. Just that intro is super spooky and scary. Got Come to the Sabbath is another favorite on here. Just overall, amazing, amazing album. Number three, here's where we get to the kind of like what in the world uh, obscure. It's not really obscure, but it's one that... I could not imagine anyone else putting this high other than myself, but hey, that's what makes this interesting and cool, I guess. But got Skull Fist. Uh, this is a great Canadian band, and the album is um, Chasing the Dream. So this is a new wave of traditional heavy metal album and band, and you got the guys there on the back. Love these guys. Um, this, I would kind of describe it as a blend of like Iron Maiden with Dokken but faster. So if you think that sounds appealing, go give this a listen. The opening song, Hour to Live, is amazing. Bad for Good, which the way I discovered this band was from that movie, uh, Deathgasm. Stupid. It's like a fun, stupid movie, but uh, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it was on Netflix a while back, just like a 
kind of horror comedy metal movie and their song was at the end of the movie i was like wow that sounds really good looked it up and this has been one of my favorite albums since so you're gonna pay is amazing um don't stop the fights great mean street rider the final song's great but uh fantastic album that i highly recommend um chasing the dream skull fist number three and now number two is a band that i've gotten into a ton the last couple of months and Another one that really don't see anyone else putting this high, and that is Invo Invoking the Majestic Throne of Satan by Inquisition. This is good black metal here. The way the band is, people call them Colombian, which they are, but they're not. I mean, they are kind of Colombian, but also American. You got the guy who is the band leader, Dagon. He was born in America. He has a Colombian mother, American father. He moved to Colombia when he was like six, seven years old, lived over there. He formed the band over there, so I guess that's their Colombian technically, but he moved back to America in like 96 and that's when he got the other member of the band incubus it's just a two-man group and um fantastic stuff if you like thrash metal i'd imagine you'd like this because there's a lot of thrash elements in it but also some uh more melodic atmospheric stuff as well kind of dark evil sounding stuff obviously you can tell by the name but uh, a couple standout tracks on this album i'd say are kill with hate and, and uh, embraced by the unholy powers of death and destruction um if you're into extreme metal and you don't know these guys go listen to them they're great and my number one I'm sure everybody knew before the video started, but it is gonna be Peace Sells, But Who's Buying by Megadeth, favorite band of all time. This is, I've done top 25 metal albums in the past, and this one came in at number three. So my third favorite album of all time, my favorite sophomore release of all time, and really this is a pretty much perfect track listing. Yeah, um, I am superstitious. It's it's an okay cover, it's, it's pretty good still, but it is the weakest on the album. Yeah, Wake Up Dead, The Conjuring, title track, Devil's Island's amazing, Good Morning Black Friday, which has always been one of my absolute favorite Megadeth songs. Same with, uh, same with My Last Words, the final song on here. That's a top 10 Megadeth song. The guitar solo at the end from Dave Mustaine, one of his best ever. Bad Omen, another great one, but uh, top to bottom, this is an amazing album. Chris Poland, Gar Samuelson, uh, The Two Daves, freaking putting out a masterpiece right here with their second release, and that does wrap up my top 20 that is number one peace sells but who's buying so as i said there are a ton of honorable mentions you're probably not going to run through too many because i could sit here all day listing freaking albums with this because so many great ones but a couple that were really close tooth and nail which is on my shirt here amazing album from Dokken. cause of death by obituary is a great classic death metal album leprosy by death uh marching out by ingvin malmsteen got second heat by racer x slave to the grind by skid row Invasion of Your Privacy by Rat, Shout at the Devil by Motley Crue, uh, Enter the Moonlight Gate by Lord Belial. I, I don't know how much longer I want to go on with this. I got so many listed here. Spreading the Disease, uh, Frolic Through the Park, Tightrope by a band called Anthem, which is a great Japanese metal band, Keeper of the Seven Keys Part One, Schizophrenia by Sepultura, uh, Fury of the Storm is a great one by freaking Dragon Force. I love Dragon Force. I don't care what anybody says. It's amazing guitar playing with that band. Uh, but uh, Wings of Tomorrow by Europe, first two albums, great classic uh, traditional metal. But uh, that's most of what I wanted to list. Obviously, there's a ton more great ones. And um, as usual, I would like to know what y'all thought. Give me your list in the comments because I'm sure I didn't get everything. But uh, these are tough to do. So give me yours in the comments. And until next time, thank you for watching.